Today we're going to talk about how to draw some covalent compounds and I'm going to show you um, step by step uh, how to go about doing that and we'll also revisit um, the concept of polarity. So the first one that we're going to do is a single covalent bond and we're going to draw hydrogen iodide and the formula for that is HI. Now, when you go to draw this, what you do is you count up the number of valence electrons for each of those. So knowing that hydrogen is in the first family, I know that it has one electron. And iodine has seven electrons. So that gives me a total of eight electrons to work with. When I draw these, I want to find the most symmetrical arrangement. Because this is um, a binary compound, just the two elements, I will just situate both elements side by side. And then the first thing that you do is you put a pair of electrons between the two atoms that are sharing. So I'll put two. That leaves me with six electrons remaining. What you do is you put those six electrons that are remaining around the peripheral atoms. I know that hydrogen, having only one valence shell, can accommodate two electrons. However, iodine will accommodate more. So it makes sense for me to go fill those remaining six electrons. And then I check that everybody has fulfilled their um, octet. So here iodine has its eight when I take a look at two shared pairs and three lone pairs and hydrogen is content with the two. So that is the formula for hydrogen iodide. What we generally do is we clean that up a little bit. This is called the Lewis dot structure and I replace the shared pair with one stick that indicates two electrons and then iodine. What you can do is you can leave the lone pairs on iodine as well, just to indicate that it has um, its full octet. Now, if I want to take this a step further and take a look at how those shared pair of electrons um, are being shared, I would use my electronegativity values. And I would go ahead and I would find hydrogen, which is 2.1, and I'd find iodine, which is 2.5. And then what I would do is if I just write those values up above, I would calculate the difference in electronegativity, delta EN, delta being the triangle, meaning the difference between. So I would do 2.5 minus 2.1, which is 0.4. And then I take a look at my continuum. Where does that delta EN fall? And I remember that if my value is less than or equal to 0.4, this is considered to be a non-polar covalent bond, meaning that this shared pair of electrons is being shared equally. There isn't a greedy atom of the two. Let's do another one. Let's do hydrogen bromide, HBr. And again, we will see because hydrogen is from the alkali family and bromine from the halogen family, I have a total of eight electrons to work with. And in this case, it will look very similar to hydrogen iodide. The only difference being the polarity of the two. When I go to calculate the delta En, and again, I will Let's clean that up a little bit with using my structural diagram. And I will see that bromine has a value of 3. And again, hydrogen 2.1. So I'll just write that above. And when I calculate the difference, when I subtract the two, I always take the larger minus the smaller. I get a value of 0.9. That indicates to me it falls in this area on the continuum. And so it is a polar covalent bond. This shared pair of electrons likes to spend their time closer to the bromine most of the time. So we can use a vector arrow to show the distribution where the electrons like to spend more of their time closer to the more electronegative atom because it has the higher value. I know it's the more greedier of the two. Or you can show these partial negative symbol, meaning 
it has a partial negative, not a full negative, because if it was a full negative, it would be an ionic bond. But because electrons are negative and they spend more of their time in the vicinity of the bromine, it gives this end a slightly charged um, dipole, partial negative, and this end is partial positive. So there's a single covalent bond. When we take a look at double covalent bonds, we can use diatomic oxygen as our example. So O2. And what we do in this case is we say, okay, oxygen is in the sixth family. So when we go to figure out the number of electrons, we say, oh, it's in the sixth family. It has six valence electrons, but there's two of them. So two times six electrons. I have total 12 electrons to work with. So what we do is we draw our oxygen and we automatically put a pair in the middle. Then what I do is I say, oh, I have 10 electrons remaining after I put that pair in the middle and I go ahead and I fill my octets. So that gives me eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Then what I do is I take a look and I say, is each oxygen content? Do they have their eight? I notice that this oxygen has eight, but this oxygen only has six. So we have a bit of a problem. When that happens, what you do is you take one of your lone pairs and you create what's called a double bond so that everybody has fulfilled their octet. So we move that lone pair into the middle. And then we can see that both oxygens have their full eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. When we clean that up using our structural diagram, I use a double bond like so, and I leave my lone pairs to indicate that the octets have been fulfilled. Because these are two of the same atom, and oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.5 and 3.5, it would make sense that when I subtract that value, it's a zero, they're gonna be sharing those um, equally. So this would be considered to be a nonpolar covalent bond. Let's take a look at carbon dioxide, CO2. So carbon is in the fourth family, so it has four electrons available. I have two oxygens, each with six, so that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 electrons in total that I have to work with. Now, when possible, molecules want to aim for symmetry. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put carbon in the middle, flanked by two oxygens. That gives me symmetry. Remember, first rule, put a pair of electrons between the central and the peripheral atoms for bonding. Then you go to the peripheral atoms and you fill their octets. So here I have two, four, I need to get to 16. So six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. I still have six more to look after. 12, 14. Okay, what do we do? Oh, is that right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right, so when we go to do carbon, we have to see, uh-oh, oxygens are happy, but the carbon does not have its full octet. What must I do in order to make sure that everybody is content? I must take a pair, move it into the middle, and I will take a pair from here and move it into the middle. And we've noticed that in that doubling up process, we've been able to fulfill the octet of every single atom. So when I go to double up, we have a double link on both sides. And there we have it, leaving the lone pairs in. When I go to take a look at how the shared pair of electrons um, are between carbon and oxygen, I go to my table of electronegativities and I see there's oxygen, there's carbon. Carbon is 2.5, oxygen's 3.5. So 2.5 and 3.5. When I subtract those two values, 
I get an electronegativity difference equal to one. So that means that this shared pair of electrons are creating a polar covalent bond. They are not being shared equally. Because this is the bigger of the two values, we know that the electrons are being pulled in that direction. And on this side, they're being pulled in that direction. So this oxygen is slightly negative. This oxygen is slightly negative and carbon is slightly positive. So we end up creating polar covalent bonds within the molecule. Our last one that I like to do is a triple covalent bond. Triple covalent bonds, as the title implies, create three links between atoms. So if we take a look at diatomic nitrogen, each nitrogen has five valence electrons. So that means that two times five electrons gives me a total of 10 electrons that I can work with. I put each nitrogen side by side, I put a pair of electrons in the middle, and then I go ahead and I fill until I get to 10. And there we have it. We see that this nitrogen has eight, this only has four. I can't just throw in extra um, electrons, I can only work with 10. So what must we do? We take from here, we double up. Now this nitrogen is still happy, it has two, four, six, eight. This nitrogen has two, four, six, still not content. So what I do is I take another pair and I put it in the middle. Now I see we have two, four, six, eight. This nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. We aim for symmetry. And so we've got our triple covalent bond. When I rewrite that as a structural diagram, we leave the lone pairs and we see this is what we get. These would be shared equally because it's two of the same atom. So hopefully that gives you um, an idea of how to draw single, double, and triple covalent bonds. On the next slide, you're going to see that I've included um, some software that you can try that um, will enable you to draw some of these molecules online. Um, I like to use Sketchpad, but you can certainly draw these by hand and then take an image um, for your assignment and upload it that way or give some of the software programs a try, depending on whether you have a Mac or a PC. And um, if one suits you, then you are more than welcome to use that as well.